Namaste and a very, very good morning to all of you. I welcome you to my channel, The Outlier. My name is Mithun. And in today's video, I will be talking about a topic which is called as homo scedasticity. One of the important assumptions in linear regression is that the error term follows normality with mean zero and constant variance. I repeat, error term follows normal distribution with a mean of zero and a constant variance. If there is constant variance for the error term, it is called as homoscedasticity. We want homoscedasticity in the residual term. What happens many times is that this assumption is violated. That, that is, the error terms might not follow normal distribution. And instead of homoscedasticity, we may have non-constant variance or what is called as heteroscedasticity. In today's video, we will explore how do you detect whether there is heteroscedasticity in your data. Heteroscedasticity is a problem. We will also talk about how to correct the problem of heteroscedasticity. To answer all these questions, what I will be doing is I will work on a data set which is called as polishing data set. I'll click on file menu. Recently used files, there is nothing. Let me click on recently used data. And right at the top, you see the data set, which is called as polishing. You have different household utensils, like a bowl, casserole, dish, tray, plate. The type is given here. And to manufacture each of these household utensils, what is the time taken? That is uh, given in the variable time. What is the diameter of... Uh, each of these household utensils is also recorded here. And when you sell this, what is the price that each of these household utensils commands? For example, a casserole with diameter of around 10 centimeters with, uh, it takes a time of uh, 47 uh, minutes to manufacture and it uh, commands a price of around $144. So similarly, you have different uh, items, what is the corresponding diameter of each of these uh, utensils, what is the time that it takes, and the price. Now, the question is, when we build a linear regression model, which we will build, how do we detect for the problem of heteroscedasticity? Now, to do this, let me click on the option Analyze, then go to Regression. The second item here is linear regression. I have to specify the dependent variable as well as the independent variable. Time is the dependent variable here and diameter would be my independent variable. For the purpose of simplicity, I'm just specifying only two variables. You can take as many variables as possible in the independent list. I am using time as the dependent variable because the time taken to manufacture any of these household utensils is a function of the diameter. Larger the diameter, more the time it takes. Lesser the diameter, lesser the time it takes. Now, a couple of important things. If you want to check whether the variable error term or residuals follows normal distribution with mean zero and constant variance. How do we do this? At the right-hand side top corner, you have statistics and plots. Please click on the plots tab, which is the second tab from the top. Within the plots, you can see in the canvas on the left-hand side, you have seven different variables that SPSS shows. One is the dependent variable. This is the original dependent variable, which is time. Second one is Z predicted. Because there's a prefix Z, we, uh, we are referring to standardized predicted values. The third variable is Z residuals, which is standardized residuals. Then we have D residuals. D residuals refers to deleted residuals. Then we have adjusted predicted values. We have studentized residuals values. And then we have studentized deleted residual values. S resid stands for studentized residuals. 
SD residual stands for studentized deleted residuals. It's very easy to get confused as to which one should be the dependent variable and which one should be the independent variable when you are making a scatter plot. All that I'm trying to do here is to construct a scatter plot. And with the help of a scatter plot, I can detect whether or not there is heteroscedasticity in my data set. In the Y variable, what I will be doing is I will be specifying the last variable, SD residuals or studentized deleted residuals. So this is my Y variable. What should I take along the X variable? This is Z predicted. I will be taking standardized predicted values as the X variable. At the bottom left-hand side corner, you see what is called as standardized residual plots. Yes, I need standardized residual plots, namely histogram and normal PP plot. What this setting will do is that it will take, it will plot uh, studentized deleted residuals along the y-axis and along the x-axis it will plot the predicted values. I will be able to obtain a scatter plot. Along with the scatter plot I can also see a histogram and a normal probability plot which helps me check whether the error terms follow normal distribution or not. I will click on continue at this stage and then go to the option save. This is the third tab from the top. Please click on the option save. Here, you see many, many items uh, that are being displayed. Please read the heading. It says predicted values. I will be choosing standardized predicted values. I'll also be choosing standardized residual values because I can plot standardized predicted as well as standard residuals separately outside of linear regression. Once I make this setting, I don't. Uh, I will not choose any of these things, though there are a lot of useful statistics to be discussed. Uh, for the purpose of this presentation, I want to keep it very, very simple and focused on homoscedasticity. I want the data. I want my residuals should to be uh, to be following the assumption of homoscedasticity. With these selections, I'll choose continue and then OK. You can see. SPSS quickly comes back with the output. This is the model summary table, ANOVA table, and coefficients. I have made other videos uh, which talk about each of these uh, items. Uh, the purpose of this video is specifically to check one of the assumptions, that is whether the error term follows normal distribution with mean zero and constant variance. Right. What you're seeing now is a histogram. This is nothing but a histogram. And we are using the variable standardized residuals. We are checking whether the error terms or the residuals follow normal distribution or not. As you can see here, this is not exactly normal, but it is very close to normal distribution. There is nothing to suggest that the error term is deviating from normality. This assumption is important, especially if you're doing hypothesis testing and such things. And therefore, error, what do we mean by error? It is nothing but the difference between the actual and the predicted value. If you take a simple subtraction between the actual time taken to manufacture a household utensil, subtract it with the predicted time, actual minus predicted will always give you the residuals. And that residual is what I am plotting here. When I look at this particular histogram, I can say that the residual more or less follows normal distribution. If I scroll down, what I see here is a PP plot. PP stands for probability, probability plot. And when you look at the heading here, it says normal PP plot of regression standardized residuals. These distributions, these data points should lie along the 45 degree line. If these data points lie along the 45 degree line, I can say that the variable follows normal distribution. I do agree that there is some deviation from normality at the center here, but uh, it is not a big, big deviation. So when I look at the histogram and the PP plot, 
I can say the variable error term follows normality, is approximately normal, may not be exactly normal. That is the first part of it. If I further scroll down, this is very, very interesting. This is a scatter plot. And when you look at the scatter plot, look at the spread of the data points. In the x-axis, we are taking the predicted value, predicted time. And in the y-axis, we are taking the residual value. As the predicted time increases, please observe the scatter. It is almost increasing. Here, it is almost clustered around zero. But as I move from left to right, it is the error terms, the distribution is spread out. It is opening almost like a crocodile's mouth. Uh, it keeps on increasing. What does this mean? This simply means that when the predicted values increase, the, there is more variation in the residual terms as well. As the prediction time increases, the residuals also increase. Now, this is a clear indication that there is heteroscedasticity in my data set. I repeat, there is heteroscedasticity in the data set. Had these data points been along this particular line, along the line zero, almost parallel to the x-axis, I could have concluded that there is constant variance. However, when I look at this particular graph, I can say that there is no homoscedasticity, which is a bit of a problem. Now, the question is, how do you correct for heteroscedasticity? There may be 10 independent variables. How do you correct for heteroscedasticity? Now, we have to just take a step back and ask which of the independent variables is causing heteroscedasticity. Now, precisely to answer this particular question, what I will do is I'll go to graphs. The very first option here is chart builder. The chart builder dialog box opens up. I would like to see a scatter plot here. There are nine different scatter plots that you can see here. This is the preview that SPSS shows. I will drag and drop the very first option. Now, what the scatter plot does, it is asking me to specify the y variable and the x variable. What I will do is I will choose the residual along the y axis and I will not choose predicted. I will be choosing the independent variable along the x axis. I repeat, choose the residuals along the y axis and choose the independent variable along the x axis. Why am I doing this? Because I'm specifically investigating uh, which independent variable is responsible for heteroscedasticity or non-constant variance. Hetero means non-constant, not same. Scedasticity means spread. Homo scedasticity, if you break it down, leads to same variance. We want same variance, but the data is saying the error terms is displaying non-constant variance. So if you have taken 10 independent variables, you might want to run this particular scatter plot with each of the 10 independent variables. Please take along the y-axis standardized residuals, take x1 in the, uh, take uh, the first independent variable in the x-axis, produce a scatter plot, investigate whether first variable is responsible for heteroscedasticity. Then rerun the same analysis of scatter plot with chart builder with the second independent variable, investigate whether the second variable is responsible for heteroscedasticity. You have to do this for all the independent variables. For the purpose of simplicity, I'm just taking only one independent variable here. I will click on OK. And you can see here, when you look at the independent variable, this is how the spread looks like. The residuals, again, it increases. It's almost like a V shape here. As the diameter increases, the residuals or the error term also increases. This graph can be compared to the earlier graph. We observe the same kind of pattern. Please look at the spread here. 
as i said as you move from left to right that is when you start manufacturing utensils with larger diameters there is error in your prediction which re gets reflected in higher residuals this graph and this graph more or less looks the same indicating that the first variable diameter is responsible for heteroscedasticity now one problem that you one question that you might want to ask is how do we correct for heteroscedasticity so if there is a non constant variance that is the variance uh, that is the variance is not the same it varies uh, if the variation in the residual terms are very very high how do you correct for the problem of heteroscedasticity so the answer is in future we have to define a weighing variable a variable with weights in future we have to come up with a variable with appropriate weights based on the inverse of the diameter of the product because this variable is diameter i have to specify the weights which will be inverse of the diameter of the product using this weighing variable will decrease the influence of the products with large diameter and highly variable polishing time resulting in more precise regression estimates so with this i have come to the end of today's presentation in today's presentation we looked at the problem of heteroscedasticity and how we can detect heteroscedasticity with spss i thank you very much for uh, watching this particular uh, presentation i request you to subscribe to my channel and uh, please share the video with your relatives and friends thank you very much have a great day